Smith, and I'm the owner, president, head coach, general manager, and chief running officer of Marathon Dynamics, a company that for 20 years has uh, helped runners improve their running through bringing out their best in mind, body, and spirit. Today, we'd like to talk to you about being the best dynamo runner you can be. Now, essentially that's a look, a very close look, at the little things, the details behind the training that you do that makes ultimately the difference in your running. Before we do that though, I'd like to draw your attention to kind of a recap, a reminder that anything we talk, everything we talk about today only matters. It is moot if these foundations are not taken care of beforehand. And what I mean by that is that on a daily basis, these are behaviors that have to be second nature to the degree that they almost can't be missed two days in a row. <laughs> okay, that's how important these are. So many of you know what these are. Some may not, some may think you know, uh, and I'm certainly not, the first talk in this series was all about that. So I'm not gonna talk about that, that material in detail, but very quickly, as a quick reminder, and maybe something to look up or look back on if you haven't already, these are essential behaviors every day, pretty much, okay? Running health insurance. Unless you are out there five or six days a week doing power walking for 30 minutes a day, or if you want to, if you want to run up the ante, doing what I call a jiggity jog, that little silly word, to basically mean as easy and slow a running motion as you can do, um, but that keeps the stride rate really high. You choose, mix it up, do five of one and none of the other, you, whatever mix you like, but that is an essential behavior. Okay, for runners who want to improve long term as they age. Unfortunately, I think that's everybody. Uh, so that's really important to do, five or six days a week. The other one is the 600 ups. Okay, that's real easy. Less than five minutes a day. All you need to do is 100 of these on one foot, a straight leg. 100 on the other foot. Then, 100 bent leg raises, okay? All the way up, and 100 on the other side. And 100 small hops. Want to make it really good? You alternate, left and right, left and right. Jump over that pink one, okay? And then 100 on the other side. Doesn't take five minutes when you get good at it, I promise. <laughs> and every kind of running injury below the knee seems to disappear, okay? That's the power of 600 ups. And then the final maintenance behavior is hip smurf. Hip, strength, mobility, utility, robustness. That's a bit of a stretch. And flexibility, okay? So there's a whole host uh, of range, uh, range of options to choose from, 10 or 12 of them. I don't expect, unless you're real keener, to you to do them all, but pick five or six from that range of options that are physically meaningful for you. I would suggest though, that no matter which five or six you pick, at least one of them is down on all fours, I would say one or two, okay? And is probably the fire hydrant <laughs> version, okay? So we don't wanna kick there. But we go forward, side, and back. In that motion, both sides, 15 to 20 reps, one or two sets, okay? When you're down there, once you're done, a good other option is forward or back, hip circles. Wicked. Or balancing, strengthening, the fulcrum of movement for runners. Okay, really important. Okay, and that, those ones, 600 ups and hip smurf, only need to be done three times a week. But it has to be three times a week, without fit. Okay? The best thing to do for that, that whole range of, of behaviors, is make a contract with yourself. Every week, you will do three of these, each. Every week, you will do five of those, 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, if you miss one, the next week, 
you have to, you can choose, but you have to remove one of your key runs. You're not allowed to do one of your three, three big runs. Okay, that's the deal. You make that pact with yourself, you honor it, and guess what'll happen? If you're wired like most runners, these will happen, okay? So that's what we do to stay healthy. Uh, that's a whole other seminar. We won't talk too much about it, but anyone will allude to it. And the other ones are on the upside, I guess, the more positive side, not just eliminating the negative, but uh, dealing or advancing the positive is about when you're running healthy, this give 110% philosophy of our marathon dynamic system, which essentially says, if everything's going well, you're not injured or just the, the most innocent of niggles, probably the best most of us can hope for. If you're there, then don't just do what's in your plan at 10% on the biggie runs, the long runs, the OMPs that we're gonna talk about, uh, maybe even the speed work, okay? Up to 10%, add it when the going is good. Because guess what? What we've learned after 20 years of doing this is that most running seasons for any one individual are never perfect. We have lives, we have sickness, we have circumstance, we have injuries to deal with. Four to five months is a long time to go without having that, you know, being cut down, at least in part, at the knees. So, you're, the best you're ever going to hope for is 90, 85, 80, or worse, or, or less percent of your volume, right? Depending on how the season's going. So why not aim high to account for, to give yourself some slack and some, some uh, you know, some room to move, some wiggle room, and account for the downside. That's been a strategy that many of our runners have uh, used to great success and to continue to evolve and improve. So that's the essential nugget of give 110%. And then the final one is a whole seminar into of itself, and we we'll probably will do that another day, but the running repishage. Our, I dare say almost proprietary, this is not cross-training, I mean it is, but it's not just going out and cross training when I'm hurt or when I'm healthy doing some extra other activity, okay? That's what most runners do. Marathon dynamics runners running repishage, which is a very strategic way using running similar versus running contrast activities in a, in a combination depending on who you are and where you are with experience, with running health, etc., to basically go on another track. That's what the repishage is about for those that do rowing and archery and sword fighting and things like that, uh, you, get, uh, you get another chance in those sports. And that's where we borrow that term, which literally means refish or refish up again, um, to go after the original goal. It's not a decision flow chart where you have, you were on the original plan and now something's happened and you have to either give up or choose an option B. This is another way back to the A game goal. If you're willing to make that make that commitment okay so that's the review uh and unless those are all happening and you're committed to them you understand them you apply them everything else we talk about here which is now about how to get the most out of your training is part of the course.